there have been questions surrounding aliens or other life forms in the universe for centuries. And one astrophysicist has dedicated his work to researching just that. Avi Loeb is the director of the Galileo Project, which hopes to bring the search for extraterrestrial technology from anecdotal observations to transparent scientific research. Loeb has published hundreds of papers and is also a professor of science at Harvard University. He is Canada Tonight's Spotlight Conversation. And we are joined now by world-renowned astrophysicist Avi Loeb in Boston. Thanks for being here, uh, Professor. So, I, I, you know, you are known for your pioneering research into black holes and cosmology and also extraterrestrial life. But your, your life started as a farmer. So what sparked your interest in physics? Well, thanks for having me. Um, indeed, I grew up on a farm and uh, was connected to nature. And still, nowadays, I don't have any footprint on social media. Uh, and uh, uh, I was primarily interested in the biggest questions that uh, we face during our short life, uh, which are in the realm of philosophy. But uh, I was drafted uh, to an obligatory military service, and uh, I preferred to pursue physics, which was useful uh, for the military at the time. And so I ended up uh, with a career in astrophysics. I was offered a position at uh, Princeton University and later Harvard. And uh, I realized late in my life that, in fact, even though it was an arranged marriage, I'm married to my true love. <laughs> uh, and the most fundamental question that we can ask is whether we have a neighbor out there, because we know it, from our private lives that uh, when we find a partner, it gives a new meaning to our existence. And we haven't found another uh, intelligent species out there, but I'm quite confident that it is out there because, you know, there are hundreds of billions of stars like the sun in the Milky Way galaxy alone, and a substantial fraction of them, perhaps a quarter, uh, host a planet the size of the Earth, roughly at the same separation. So it would be arrogant of us to imagine that Albert Einstein was the smartest scientist who ever lived since the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. And in fact, most stars formed billions of years before the sun. And uh, if we find a neighbor out there, you know, it's likely that the neighbor is more advanced than we are and we can learn from it. So I see it also as an opportunity for us to grow. Hmm. Uh, tell, tell me about the Galileo project. That is something that you have been the head of for some time. What is that project? Yeah, so I was uh, driven in uh, the direction of searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. Well, you might say if, uh, by two reasons. One is I read the, the news every day and, uh, you know, it just strikes me that we could get better and there might be a more intelligent uh, student in our class of uh, intelligent civilizations. But the second is that over the past decade, for the first time in human history, we had sensors that uh, could uh, detect objects from outside the solar system. Uh, and the first one uh, that was spotted uh, was a meteor, roughly the size of a watermelon, an object that collided with Earth and was moving so fast that it couldn't be bound to the sun by the sun's gravity. So it must have arrived into the solar system from outside. It was an interstellar meteor spotted by sensors aboard U.S. government satellites. This is the network of satellites that was constructed about a decade ago to monitor uh, the risk from ballistic missiles. Uh, so they are capable of detecting the heat uh, when coming from uh, the engine of a ballistic missile uh, as it gets launched. And at the same time, every now and then, they see an object colliding with Earth through the fireball that it generates as a result of its friction on air. So it detected this interstellar meteor, mm -hmm. and uh, I decided to lead an expedition to find the materials of this meteor to figure out whether it was a Voyager-like meteor. Imagine our own spacecraft colliding with a planet like the Earth. Uh, it would appear as a meteor of unusual material strength and unusual speed, just like this uh, meteor was. And we collected materials and 
found uh, a composition, a chemical composition of material that indicates that it may have arrived from outside the solar system. So that's very exciting. That's one branch of the Galileo project, looking for the materials of interstellar meteors, objects that collide with Earth but originated outside the solar system. And I should point out, this is the first time that scientists put their hands on materials of a big object that came from outside the solar system. The second branch of the Galileo project is to look at functional devices that may be near Earth. Uh, you know, this meteor might have been space trash. Uh, you know, we sent out probes that uh, within uh, hundreds of years would be just space trash. And one of them is the uh, Tesla Roadster car that um, SpaceX launched uh, mm -hmm. in 2018. It's moving around the sun, and one day it may even collide with Earth uh, in uh, tens of millions of years. So it's basically space rush, and uh, that's the type of object that you may imagine for this meteor that I described. But then you can imagine objects that have functionality, that are uh, still uh, operating, and they may have a brain in the form of artificial intelligence. So the question is, do we have such objects in our sky? Because um, the director of national intelligence in the United States uh, delivered three reports to the U.S. Congress uh, based on uh, military uh, personnel that right. uh, saw uh, unidentified anomalous phenomena. So we decided to build an observatory at Harvard University. It's already working, monitoring the entire sky all the time and collecting data in the infrared, uh, optical, radio and audio. So basically we're taking a movie of the sky, the entire sky, and then we analyze it with the machine learning software to figure out whether we only see familiar objects like birds, drones, airplanes, balloons, satellites, or right. maybe one in a million might be from outside of this Earth. So, so far, we saw hundreds of thousands of objects. Uh, we haven't seen anything unusual, but uh, we are building a new observatory in Colorado, yeah. and uh, we just got funded by the Richard King Mellon Foundation to build a third observatory in Pennsylvania. If this is indeed a piece of alien technology, what are the implications for our understanding of the universe? Well, it, it, uh, any such a discovery has huge implications. First, it would uh, be a, a psychological shock similar to the one that uh, my daughters experienced. You know, when they were at home at a young age, they thought that they're at the center of the world. Uh, but then on the first day at the kindergarten, they had a psychological shock because they saw all the other kids that look like them. Uh, some of them were smarter. So civilization, you know, our civilization at first thought that we are at the center of the universe. Right. Uh, Copernicus and Galileo told us, no, you are not. And uh, if, you know, a lot of scientists still maintain the view that perhaps we are alone, that there is nothing more intelligent than we are. Uh, of course, within a decade, we might face the shock that our own technological kids, uh, AI systems might become more capable uh, than the human brain. Uh, but the, the second shock, which will be much more powerful, is if uh, we have a neighbor that developed science and technology to a much greater level uh, than, than we currently possess. And, you know, it could look like a miracle to us to see those technologies of the future that we haven't developed yet. Uh, so a very advanced technological civilization could be a good approximation uh, to God because, uh, you know, we would see something that looks miraculous and we would be filled with uh, awe at seeing that. Uh, but moreover, it will... Uh, increase our aspirations for space because right. there would be a role model for us better than our politicians. Someone that you know well, tells me, us there is a better path. Yeah, and let, let me ask you about uh, politicians. And I, I wouldn't be uh, you know asking this if, it, if you didn't have this expertise because it is a bit of conspiracy theory. Do you think that governments ha have, have given you know the population? all of the information that they have when it comes to UFOs, when it comes to uh, perhaps extraterrestrial uh, technology, life? Well, the first thing to understand is that the, the day job of government is national security. Uh, so government does not 
uh, employ the very best scientists in the world, and they would be happy if they just realized that there is no threat from an adversarial nation. Uh, and so it's possible they have data that they don't fully understand, but they classify it, they do not release it to scientists simply because it was collected by classified sensors. So they don't want our adversarial countries to be aware of the sensors on satellites or on the ground that are being used. Uh, and therefore they keep everything uh, away from the public eye. Uh, this is not the way science is done. And my point is, the sky is not classified. So we can look at the sky. The oceans are not classified. We can go there and collect materials from interstellar meteors. And so we can figure out the answer ourselves instead of waiting for the government to tell us what lies outside the solar system. Uh, it, it's actually my day job to figure out what lies outside the solar system. And guess what? Most of the matter in the universe is of a substance that we haven't figured out yet. It's called dark matter. And we've invested billions of dollars in experiments to figure it out over the past uh, several decades. We still didn't find out what it is. So my recommendation is that, you know, there is an even bigger question that would affect uh, the lives of people. And, and that is where, whether we have a neighbor uh, and the one uh, approach that was not tried in the past is to search for objects that may have arrived at our mailbox, that may be in our backyard. You know, if we find a tennis ball from a neighbor, at least we would know that the neighbor plays tennis. So last question, as exciting as your extraterrestrial research is, uh, it remains controversial among some people in the scientific community who call it too sensational. What is your response to those critics? Well, my response is that common sense is not common. And so um, this is the most fundamental question that will affect the future of humanity that science can address. The public cares a lot about it. The government cares about it. Uh, and it's inappropriate of the scientific community to ridicule it and ignore it because we have the tools to address it scientifically by collecting evidence, not having opinions, what I usually tell young people is stay young. Uh, do not pretend to be the adults in the room <laughs> that know the answer in advance. And uh, my hope is that since this is a path that was not taken in the past, there might be some low hanging fruits. And uh, you will know about them if we collect them uh, because the scientific process that the Galileo project is following uh, will uh, show the findings to the public as soon as we have them. And maybe that young farmer who was peering up in the sky looking at the stars uh, so long ago will uh, be at the forefront of that discovery. Uh, astrophysicist Avi Loeb, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me and I'm willing to take a one-way trip anytime to space if <laughs> offered. As am I. We'll see. We'll do it together. <laughs> Thanks, Abby.